Donegal start this Ulster semi-final without Carol Lacey and Neely Gallagher. Lacey missed the start of the Tyrone match, while Gallagher's absence today is compensated by the return to fitness of Mark McHugh. In the reshuffle, Ryan Bradley moves to midfield with Declan Walsh at wing back and David Walsh at wing forward. Opponents down in the same starting 15 which began in Celtic Park. Kevin McKernan was outstanding in that quarter-final tie and he lines up once again in the centre of the field with Callum King. Mark Poland pulls the strings at number 11 behind a full forward line which includes Benny Coulter playing in his 14th championship season. And Benny Coulter runs into the challenge of Frank McGlynn. Good shoulder. Benny Gall win it back. Bradley back there as far as Michael Murphy taking on Turley shooting from the angle and putting it over the bar first point to come from play comes after nine and a half minutes a great uh, turnover in the, around the middle of the park but Murphy just has that ability to calm things down to bring certainty to an awful lot of mayhem out there that's a very good opening score from play for Murphy Rory Cavanaugh sweeping past Ambrose Rogers down here as far as Mark McHugh the champions in full flow Thompson in, but that's a poor ball, straight to Peter Turley. So many darn bodies back there. But sweeping all around them, however, are Danny Gall, and back into the attack they come again here. Fed back out here to Matt Fadden to kick under pressure and to somehow manage to get it over the bar. It's an amazing kick by Colin McFadden. There's a lot of difficulty with that. The fans are absolutely delighted with the opening that they've made here, and the champions are playing like champions. McFadden. Big ball in, but collected here well by the downfall back line. And once again, it is Turley breaking. Always played a short pass, intercepted by David Walsh. 40 metres from the target, McBrearty has a go at it. Swings his left leg and drives it over the bar. Does well, the youngster. And here he's made it six points to two with this wonderful kick. A very assured finish. Mark Poland now. Played inside here, down goes Laverty. This time uh, the foul is by Dunny Gall. This is the challenge again. This time it was uh, Eamon, Eamon McGee. McGee. Yeah, I think it's a high tackle by Eamon McGee that, uh, that time. This free kick, once again, going to be taken by Donal O'Hare. For a right-footed kicker, this is an almost impossible kick. Can he somehow make it? Oh, what about that? Three-pointed freeze. That's the only scoring that Down have managed to do in the opening almost 27 minutes. Benny Coulter now, two men back there, forced to turn it into the path of Mark Poland. Tried to make an insertion here, here's a chance of a score from play, drops in and drops over the bar, and the first score for play comes in the 32nd minute by Mark Poland, and it's six points to four. Lonely bit of skill that time by Mark Poland, took the ball from Coulter on the move, Beautiful sidestep, held his head, saw the post, put them between it. That's a very good score. Michael Murphy, plenty of bodies there for down. One of them is Peter Turley, and the ball ends out going over the line. The linesman on this near side. And that ball has been booted in there brilliantly and put over the bar. A white flag, and uh, Rory Cavanagh gets his first point of the match. If the down attack had a little bit more confidence in their ability to go for scores, then they could be level at this stage because they've had a few great opportunities. Instead, it's Matt Fadden kicking, and what down cannot do, Duddy Ball, the champions can carry the ball forward with purpose, with meaning, and with strikers of the caliber of McFadden, Murphy, McBrearty. They've got winners all around the park, and this came loose, was in the uh, possession of McFadden, and he makes it 9 6. Well, in that little cameo, we saw the clear contrast between the two sides. Just an efficient, you know, economical use of the boot over the bar. No nonsense. As the teams tire, maybe we'll see a few goal chances. Dan McCarthy into Ambrose Rogers. Fed in here, so it's Turley. Still going. Back in once again to Donald O'Hare. And it goes over the bar. Good return. That's his first from play today. Six and all. Wonderful performance by the young man from Burren. That's a wonderful performance. Great counter-attack. Minds are getting tired at the moment, bodies are getting tired. There's such a never been expended by both sides. Maybe ugly at times, but it's riveting.
Anthony Thompson now back in here once again to McCreary and back to McFadden the ever reliable lazy style languidly hitting it and putting it beautifully over the bar four points two in a row now for Colin McFadden the big menacing figure leading the attack so intelligently and striking decisively and now it's ten points to seven Ryan Mallon somehow managing to locate his colleague Jerome Johnson that's his first contribution and that's gone over the bar well that is a very fine substitution and James McCartan will be delighted with that a rapid response well there's loads of life left in down yet that's fabulous from their point of view the last two points McFadden has got have been answered immediately with immediate uh, scores from down and again it's Rory Cavanagh down on his hands and knees he's been in the wars in the last few minutes and Donegal have won themselves a free kick and this has been a much tougher battle than many of their followers had imagined it would be and Michael Murphy's in no particular hurry to take it now because we're in the 70th minute and they just want to kill off the game now at this stage two, clo two points is just too tight of a lead and again the down players are close enough to him should be 13 metres back they're barely that certainly Laverty wasn't Murphy kicks anyway and irrespective of where the down cover is Murphy has the capacity to kick over their heads and get his fifth point of the match and four of those kicks have been from free kicks that's a wonderful score from Murphy that time I saw Conor Lafferty walking away shaking his head poor Lester's in admiration and disgust but that was some score from Michael Murphy James McCartan puts his hands to his head in despair because his side did well, but not quite well enough. And at the end of it all, Daddy Gold, the champions, march on to the Ulster final once again. A match where Michael Murphy and Colin McFadden shared 10 points in this game. And here at Kingspan Breffney Park, it's finished. Daddy Gold, 12 points, down nine. Look, it was a very, very tough battle today, and I suppose we can look forward to a great month now. I know it's um, it's one of the highlights of, of any player's career in Ulster, and uh, it's a very, very sought-after medal, and now we've got a chance to compete for that, and I suppose we're first in the final as well. It'll give us a chance to see the other semi-final, and it uh, gives us a month to look ahead now, and that's that's a great place for any footballer to be in. We were coming here to try and win the game. Felt we had the chances to do that. Felt that we put them on the back foot at times, and uh, just maybe in the last ten minutes, the last pass just didn't go to hand that was going to create an opening for us. So Donegal through to the final on the 21st of July. They now await the winners of next Saturday's semi-final between Cavan and Monaghan. But what do you think he'd be privately thinking about that performance? Well, I'd say privately he'd be very happy that uh, the Donegal players were brought down to earth with a bang in case they thought that the victory over Tyrone had sort of propelled them into the quarter-final of the All-Ireland. What they are facing now who are teams like Down who are going to do the same to them as they have been traditionally doing to other teams. It was a bit of a dog of a game, but James McCartan, I'm sure, will go away very happy with the energy, commitment and enthusiasm and bravery that his team brought to it but yet it still wasn't enough. So Donegal are very good at winning games like this where they had to operate for long stretches of the match today on fairly limited rations. We saw Jim McGuinness pacing the sideline towards the end of that match. Joe, he was clearly anxious. It's the first time I've seen him anxious in three years. Well, the second half against Dublin in 2011. James McCartan did his job to some tune today. I mean, really, I didn't think that Down could play in that way. I mean, everything about the manager's work today was absolutely spot on. And he was let down, you know, by poor decision making by players at times. Now, I, I can understand that. Mm. Once you choose to play in that way with a loaded defence, Donny Gall are used to playing in that suffocating environment because it's how they play in training week in, week out. They've been doing it for three years. It's what they started with. And so they're, they're entirely comfortable with it. Snatching every half chance. Three wides against Tyrone two wides today. That's, that tells you everything you need to know. Down, meanwhile, they had better chances than Donegal today. I mean, Donegal's shots today were tough shots from Murphy, particularly McFadden. All their other forwards were wrapped up. They didn't have a score. They didn't have a goal scoring chance. Down, manager did his job brilliantly. They were just let down by a few 
really bad waste of possession. I mean, the young fellow here is free. He's been great. He missed one that he should have mm. scored. Benny Coulter gave away a couple of bad balls. Well, and then the referee, mystifyingly, didn't give a free in when Anthony Thompson clearly overcarried the ball across the 14 in the 16th minute at a crucial time. Come back but to the, very little in it. Sure, come back to that point in a second. But uh, in a game like this, I suppose, you look at players who are experienced, like Colin McFadden, like, who's, who's been an experienced player in the first case and has his All-Ireland medal now to back it up. And he... The match from this afternoon, Kevin, you have the nominees. Yeah, and uh, they're all on the uh, Donegal side, who you know were, were quite powerful in their win. Anthony Thompson is our is our first selection. I thought he was very energetic and put in a big shift from start to finish. Uh, he, he was very very good and a very decent wing back. Colin McFadden, uh, look, I, I spoke of his contribution from freeze mm. and and play, really outstanding, consolidating last year's work. I, I would have said, and uh, Neil McGee who is really pushing on. Very, very uh, excellent uh, defensive display again today. And they're the three three nominations. OK, no doubt, man. Who, who got a pass? The last time we sat here, we were, we were ridiculed because we felt no Donegal supporter or you... no Donegal player deserved the man of the match. We didn't hesitate. It took us about two seconds to pick the man of the match because he was far and away the best player on the field. And that was Colin McFadden. Last year's leading scorer, today five points, three points from play. He's Donegal's leading scorer to date in the championship in two games. He scored one goal and eight points. If you put a GPS system on him, he'll probably fail on the on the right. uh, he'll fail on mileage on distance covered. His half rate won't be at the team. But you know what he can do? He's, com he's comfortable on the ball, he can win the 50-50, and he's one of the most beautiful strikers and kickers of the long range point in the modern game in any era. They're shaking their heads in disbelief in Donegal. Yeah. Let's hear then from the man from St. Michael's. It was tough going out there, but you had a superb match. Oh, you're right, it was a tough, tough game now. Real down really put it up to us there, particularly in the second half. You know, we went on 6-4 six, six, up at half time, a two-point lead playing on the one in the second half, but we just couldn't shake them off at all. We kept going three points up and put it back to two. Like, but it was a real tough battle and you know, I think it was a real workman performance from Donegal out there the day that got us over the line. You've had a great week, haven't you? I believe uh, there's a new Donegal supporter. You have a son, new son. Uh, a wee boy there, Matthew, on Wednesday evening. Congratulations. Past eight. Thanks very much. It was getting a bit close to Sunday now, so <laughs> thankfully came Wednesday and all's well, so it was a good week all round. Well, your best and wonderful week ends because you are the Aircom RT man of the match and David Leonard from Aircom is here to present your trophy to you. Yeah, congratulations to Colm and the gang. Hopefully the baby won't break that lovely trophy. That's about it for tonight. My thanks to Pat and Kevin for staying up late with us and thank you very much for watching us.